in this video I'm going to cover all the tools that you find in the camera tab okay some I will leave out for example um, new photo match will discuss in another topic and two-point perspective which we really use okay so I've just opened up a sample project which I can give you access to as well okay it's a bit more uh, realistic in the sense that this is quite important when you're going to use your camera tools you need to have some model in place so that you can use these tools effectively okay so the first thing I'm going to focus on is the next and previous part of the section okay it's it's not really covered in any toolbars here at the moment um, there is the previous option but there's no next option in your view okay so right click you can switch in your camera tools here's all your camera tools here or they're over here okay so the next part of this is just if for example I'm orbiting around this project and I'm trying to find a view to work with for example so I'll stop here go back there stop there again come back down go back there pull back here etc what this allows you to do in camera previous you can go back to previous views that you stopped at and looked at okay or you can go back and find that view that you had before without having to save a scene for example okay so that's quite handy to use okay so although there's not um, next over here but in a nutshell that's all that's that's happening okay so it just allows you to to go through the views that you had stopped on and looked at things for a minute so when you use another command or something it'll allow me to quickly go back to the views that I last stopped at or went to next etc okay so it just allows you to go through views that you've you've used or uh, orbits that you had stopped at to look at this model okay so the next thing we're going to discuss is the standard views if I go to the standard views here's all the standard views in the list it's all these tools here so I want to look at a plan so this is perspective plan view and you see it gives you front view side view back view left view okay so it just scrolls through the views that's very handy to know as well so those are all here or you can get them with this camera you can go through standard views okay now this is quite important the difference between perspective and parallel projection so first let's enable parallel projection now if I go to my views now you notice that the perspective in essence there's no lens no camera lens in place so you're looking straight at a specific view so there's no perspective happening no two-point perspective happening so it's, it's a purely flat view which is great if you want to export this um, especially when we produce sections elevation and plans okay generally we don't we don't um, present 3d or perspective elevations um, as part of your elevation uh, set of drawings because you're trying to look at the object flat okay in other words okay and once again I'll just show you the effect so here you get a true plan view for example front view especially if you're going to use this to build from the contractor needs to see this correctly okay front view Okay, so I'll just quickly, I'll stay in this view, for example, that's a pure elevation, which you like to present, but if we're into parallel projection, you'll see that it applies effects of a lens. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So that's the difference between parallel projection and perspective. Okay, for example, if I wanted to export this elevation now and put it on a sheet as an image, I would then make sure it's parallel projection, go file, 2d graphic and you can save this as an image okay and then you can work with this image all right so just bear that in mind okay two-point perspective it just changes it to a sort of a perspective mode but you need to be in the correct view camera two-point perspective and you'll notice it looks the very very similar to and the perspective so generally stick to perspective and parallel projection you use both instances the next tool I'm going to discuss is orbit okay so orbits this tool over here so all that orbit does allows you to orbit around your model 
So effectively what your middle mouse wheel does when you compress it, we press the, the wheel button on your mouse, it's the same tool, that's the orbit tool. Okay, while you're orbiting you can use the pan to pan to a side, left and right, while you're scrolling through a view, go back to orbit, orbit round, use your pan button. So it's just a more um, command driven way to navigate a model for example. Okay, so I'm going to go back to camera again. So that's orbit, pan, and then zoom. So the zoom is this button here. So you just hold, you left click and hold and drag in and out. So backwards and forwards with the mouse button while you've got the left mouse button um, compressed and pressed down. So it just allows you to zoom. Okay, go back to orbit. Okay, and then you zoom again. Okay, it's just a way to navigate your model once again. That's zoom. So field of view, this is very interesting. Um, so you're going to use different field of views for like exteriors and interiors. So if I start playing with this, if I use this button now, it changes, the, it forces the perspective. So in essence, it's like you're playing with your lens of your camera. So you could, you could work out what type of lens you're working and work out what the field of view for that lens is and replicate what the camera is trying to do. Okay, so if you use a good, just remember you don't want to force a perspective too much. Okay, but in essence, this is just trying to replicate an actual camera SLR lens. In this, but generally we try and stick to 35 degrees. Okay, or 37 degrees. I'll show you once we go inside a building, for example. Once you're inside a building, you just keep zooming. So here the field of view for a specific view might become handy. So if you, if you want a perspective, if you want to see more of the room, this is where you would use your field of view. So in essence, it's replicating what a wide angle lens or a fish eye lens will do. Okay, so just know that this function exists and it will help you present your models at a later stage if need be. Okay, so that's the field of view. I'm just going to reset that to 55 degrees and then get out of this building. I'm just using the wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. That's also zoom, by the way, your wheel mouse button. Okay. Okay, that's um, field of view. The next one is zoom window. This allows you to use a selection window, which is this tool here, to zoom into an object. Okay. So once again, I'll just show you if I want to zoom into this window, for example, use this tool here, zoom in. Okay, and then you can look at that window okay camera the next thing we're going to focus on is zoom extents this is quite an important tool which is this tool over here zoom extents sometimes stuff might get lost in the model so say now i've got a bit of line work here in the distance and you're working here quite happily and you don't know you can't find it so if you zoom extents it shows you the full extents of what's in the model bear in mind when you import AutoCAD files that have been drawn very far from the origin, this is a way to kind of find where the drawing has gone by accident. So using the zoom extents is very important. Okay, so it just, it zooms to everything that's in your model. Okay, and if you've lost something that's been dragged far away from the origin, then you can use the zoom extents to find that. Okay, okay just zoom in a bit more. Okay, zoom down a bit. Okay. So the next tool we're going to focus on in the camera section is, so that zoom extends. Okay, now these three tools are actually very handy when nav navigating 3D buildings like this. Okay, so the first one will be, let's go to camera tools again, position camera. So it's asking you where do you want to stand and look. So you're going to click position camera tool. Now it's asking you where do you want to stand. So you're going to say you're going to use the left mouse button, you're going to click and drag in the, the direction that you want to look. Okay. Now, before you click anything else, it's asking you for an eye level. Okay, all that the eye level is, it's the level from your origin. In this case, I'm on another story, so I'll probably need to make it three, six hundred high. Okay, so that's my eye level. Then, once it places the camera, it will default to this look around 
key over here. So once you've placed the camera, now it allows you to stand in this position, but to look around from this position. So you're getting a person's real world look and feel of the model. So you're exploring the model from a person's perspective. Okay, so once you've got the camera in a good position, I can use the pan key just to pan up a bit because I want to adjust, I want to move my camera up. Okay, go back to the lens. Okay, all right, so this is good. I'm looking, I can see this from a, a person's perspective. Okay, so let's look around. The next thing I can do now is navigate around the model using the walk tool. So if I start walking, it will identify steps. For example, it and sometimes it'll, it won't allow me to walk through glass. So you might have to get in the building first, then to then walk around the building. So I'm just going to use the wheel button on just to break the glass. Okay, break through, break through, break through, and now I can walk around again inside the building. Okay, and it will hit limits. So if it'll hit, I've fallen down some steps here by the looks of it. So let me go back, go back, go back. So now in essence, I'm navigating through this building. Stop. Okay, let's walk back a bit, let's walk back, walk back, walk back. Okay, now it allows me to walk through this building. Okay, it identify steps and allow me to walk up the steps, turn around. Okay, just keep the mouse button down and navigate in the direction that you want to travel. Okay, change your eye level to 1600 above ground level because that's technically now you're at eye level of a person. So you can go down the passage. Okay, you will get the hang of this the whole time I've got the left mouse button pressed in while I'm walking in the direction. So you're going to, how you, you navigate through the building is keep the left mouse button in and then just move the mouse in the direction of travel okay and then you can walk if you hit something solid just use the wheel mouse button to zoom through it a couple times until you enter the room and then you can continue navigating in the room okay so this is where you can adjust your field of view so you can see the room in a bit more detail but in essence it allows you to navigate around the model okay and then again once you're in a room and you just want to explore the room and look around the room you can use the look around tool to look around the room okay and then for example like i said earlier we can go back to field of view and change the field of view so you can see more of the room just remember you need to reset this to 35 degrees once you leave the building outside so again let me just zoom extend so i see the whole site okay now i can set my camera up to stand there look there for example, remember change your eye level to be 1600 and then use your eye. Say so you can save this view, or now you can navigate the site as well. So now you can walk around. Oh, sorry, escape. I can use the walk tool. Now I can walk around the site and it'll stick on a surface or keep working with the surface. Then you can navigate the site. Okay, so gives you a, a real, like a a real person's perspective so if any of you have played video games and you've used um, you've navigated around 3d environments in the game engine for example this is kind of the experience that you can achieve okay so and you can walk a client through and show this how we experience a site is by walking around the site and experiencing a site that way so this is a good way to give you a real world perspective of the model that you you're trying to sell to someone okay so this is it's a handy tool okay okay that's all the camera tools in a nutshell